Hey guys, this is Al again. Um, so I was cruising uh, the Mannheim auctions uh, yesterday evening, I got bored, and I uh, ran across a car that I kind of uh, was interested in buying. Um, I've been looking forward to these for some time, so, um, you know, it was pretty exciting for me. Um, in any case, this car showed up, uh, no, no uh, seller disclosure, no pictures, nothing. Um, so I got, up, I got up early today and you know, watched the webcam as it went by the block and, and, and lo and behold it drove, which was enough for me to, to want to buy it, so I bought it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm here right now, I've got my paperwork with me, I'm going to try to drive it home. I have no idea whether it's still will start, but uh, in any case, um, here's the car. In all its glory, 1968 Cadillac DeVille convertible. I've been wanting one of these for God knows how long. Um, and uh, you know this one showed up it's actually a lot cleaner than I expected I've got no idea how much bond there is in, in there but you know, right now it looks okay so uh, I'm just going to go around and uh, try to start it alright guys so um, I got the car out of the uh, lot and it uh, runs and drives fine uh, the only problem is is that the brakes are bad and as a result, you know, I'm, I'm getting practically zero pressure on the on the on the brake pedal. I don't know whether it's a booster or the master cylinder, but in any case, I can't drive it home. So I've parked it right now, and I've called a tow truck to come and take it up to my uh, to my building up in Denison. So um, uh, you know, right now, hold on tight. Car runs great. Uh, it does have a couple of weirdness going on. Um, the car was marked to have structural damage, and I'm guessing it's this fender over here, which is all crunched up. Um, apart from that, everything is pretty decent. I mean, the paint's not 100%, but it looks like it's had some kind of repaint at some point in its life. And not terrible. Um, the interior is in pretty good shape. Uh, it runs fine. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get more into it once I get it to my building and uh, give it the once over. Um, obviously, it had a stereo at one point, it has a great big bass speaker over here. Um, but that's about it. I'm not going to get more into it right now. Um, seems like a good buy though. Not, not bad for what I paid for it. So, um, can't really complain. All right. Thanks very much. All right, guys. Um, I got the, the, um, Cadillac on a tow truck and, um, brought it back to my shop. Um, it's a, it's a presentable car. I think it's, um, you know, I, I, I think it's been redone and I don't know how good. As you can see on the doors here, yeah. there's a little bit of rust. Um, you've got the same on the uh, uh, driver's side fender at the bottom. You can see it, there's a little bit of Bondo cracking. Um, but you know, overall, not a bad looking car. You know, interior is okay. Soft top, I don't know. Something happened with the soft top just now. Um, dash is in nice shape. Um, previous owner must have had some kind of Larry stereo system inside it because there's a great big bass speaker in the bottom. Um, but all in all, not a bad looking car. Um, let me see, get this thing open. Oh, heavy. So, there's the engine in all its glory. There's the data plate right there. Body by Fisher, General Motors, so as it was driving it dumped a whole bunch of coolant, I guess the cap was off over here so it was kind of bouncing up and down, you know, as it was uh, on the back of the wrecker. And uh, you know, it dumped a whole bunch of coolant on the uh, 
on the bed of the wrecker. I thought it may have damaged the radiator, but it didn't. It's probably just this. The radiator is still under pressure because I just popped this off and it hissed. So that's all good. Um, engine looks like a great big engine. Looks like a fairly recent alternator on it. Um, runs okay, it doesn't run too badly. You know, belts look okay. Um, not much don't really know much, that much about these these engines. So I think I think the 68 model year was somewhat unique because it had um, uh, the 472 engine and it had uh, the uh, disc brakes in the front. You know, as I'd mentioned earlier on, that the uh, the brakes on this thing are horrible. So I think it's got a good power booster, but the master cylinder may may be a problem, or it just may be low on fluid. I don't know. Um, it's got just about zero power steering. I've got to figure out what the deal is there. But you know, overall, it runs okay. So um, you know, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to stop the camera for a second. I'm going to run back into the uh, into the uh, uh, shop. I'm going to get some automated transmission fluid to fill up the uh, power steering pump, and then um, check the uh, brake fluid level, and maybe you know crank the engine so you guys can hear it. So give me a few seconds. Okay. So I've uh, topped up the um, ATF level, well the you know power steering fluid. I did check the uh, master cylinder. I mean, it seems like it's full of fluid. So, you know, maybe what I'll do is I'll just bleed the system, see if I can get the pressure to come out. Um, pedal kind of hits all the way to the ground, and when you try to stop the car, it doesn't really want to stop. Um, not sure. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is. These th these 68 models are supposed to have disc brakes. Uh, who knows? Alright, so the ignition switch is a little bit sticky, so it doesn't like to crank right away. Gonna have to jig, jig with it. There you go, now it's gone. Just have to add more power steering fluid. Makes sense. The engine runs pretty well, you know. Slight miss. But I think that's just a lumpy engine. It smells a bit fuely, but it's not too bad. But maybe I'll just change the master cylinder out and, uh, you know, leave the brakes through, see if that improves it. But all in all, not too bad, it's not terrible. Holy cow, this really heavy hood. I don't want to abuse it. Take it for a quick spin around the block. So a couple of things. Radio doesn't work. Kind of, I'm guessing it had a different stereo system in there. Um, not sure if the convertible top works. It's real stiff. Right, let me try. Okay. Pop there, pop there. I'm guessing. I guess the convertible top works. There. Okay. So this is what it's all about. This is what I've been wanting for so long. 
That's beautiful. Let's take it for a spin. This thing dwarfs my corniche. So I, I checked the trunk and it was full of transmission fluid, like old, uh, you know, cork bottles. So I guess this thing's been leaking a fairly decent amount. I'll show you what I mean about what's going on with the brakes. So I'm only doing, you know, 10 miles an hour. And that's me stomping on the brakes. See how long it took to stop. And when I did, and I pushed them hard, the brake light came on. So that's just not good. I don't know what's going on over there, but yeah. I'm getting barely any brakes. I don't think it's a vacuum booster because the booster seems to be working. I'm not, you know, I don't have a hard pedal, but it's just not wanting to play. So I might order just order a new master cylinder and. Uh, bench bleed it and then put it on and then see if I can you know get this thing all the brakes uh, bled out maybe check the pads and everything make sure they're in good shape seems like it has pretty clean fluid in there so I'm not sure exactly what's going on What do you guys think? I think it's cool as hell. It needs a little bit of work, but it's, you know, not a bad little car, really. I don't think it's a bad little car for the money, at least. Turn the lights on, see if the lights work. Turn signal lights didn't seem to be working very well. Oh, look at that. So I guess the interior lights weren't working, so they put some strip lights across. Fantastic. Okay, turn signal lights do work. And if you look at the turn signal lights, there's no blinkers on the inside of the car. They're here. See that? I'm not sure whether you can see it. See that? Oh, interesting. Same thing on the other side. I like it. I like it a lot. Once over, as I mentioned, the um, the power steering was leaking and uh, you know sure enough as I um, parked it here on Friday and uh, came back and there's a whole big puddle of power steering fluid underneath the, uh, uh, you know, the car. Um, what I figured out, you know I just spent a few minutes So I just spent a few minutes just cleaning the gearbox a little bit. 
um, and I top with the power fleet fluid, power steering fluid, and uh, uh, you know, um, ran the engine for a bit. And sure enough, that's where the leak's coming from, and it's the top um, top hose, and I'm guessing that's the pressure hose. So I'm not sure if it's uh, the hose itself that's bad, or um, if um, if the uh, you know the threads in the gearbox are bad. But what I'll do is I'll tighten that up and see if it solves the problem. So aside from that, engine's a little bit dirty, but not not terrible. I actually like engines that show up like this because you know it means that the car's either being driven or nobody's really tried to toss it up before they sold it. So that's a, a good thing. Um, it's got some cheesy aftermarket alarm, which always concerns me because uh, they tend to splice into electrical wiring and alarms tend to fail and when they do fail the car starts you know gives problems with the car and the car stops um, either starts misbehaving or doesn't run at all you know I, I, I suspect that that's probably what's going on with this Bentley over here so the alarm system either has gone bad and that's creating all kinds of problems uh, what else you know I'm trying to figure out where the the vent plate is on this thing and uh, I'm not exactly sure there is a a tag over here that says body by Fisher and I'm not sure if that's the vent tag or you know, it, something else anyway um, you know aside from that this window is off its track um, I've got to figure that out I got to figure out the climate control because you know convertibles are great, but they're not um, really that practical in, in Texas because in the summer it gets so hot that you really want to have the roof up and, and the air conditioning going. Um, all these rubber moldings need to be replaced, so you can see that they're non-existent. And this is the kind of thing that will cause rust. So, uh, it's kind of a, a priority for me. I think that that's really how you can prevent the car from rusting. And I don't see any, any, uh, uh, this door as well. I think the strike is bad. Obviously, it's been, it's had a paint job and not a very good one at such, so. It went and painted all the rubber moulding. Um, strike is bad. It probably need to get new hinge pins as well. If I lift up and shut the door, it shuts okay. But if I uh, just try to slam it shut, it doesn't. What else? The ignition switch is real sticky, so I'm going to have to replace that. It's... Uh, it's, uh, um, you know, you have to really jiggle with it to get it to get it to uh, turn over. And obviously the windshield's bad. It needs to be, needs to be redone. Uh, got a crack in the windshield. Um, you know, aside from that, I mean, the biggest issue now, now that I've figured out the power steering, is to figure out what's wrong with the brakes. Um, the brakes, the the booster seems to be working fine, but the uh, the brake pedal is uh, basically, you know, there's a lot of travel in the pedal, and then when you actually apply the brakes, it doesn't really stop the car, so that it doesn't really grab the brakes that well. Um, I took a look at the master cylinder, you know, opened it up, took a look inside, and there's there's plenty of fluid. Fluid's not really that dirty, but um, it's just not grabbing. So, uh, speaking to a friend of mine, he said that you know, 
you're going to replace the master cylinder, replace the brake booster at the same time because, you know, try to buy them both as a match unit because it could be, you know, uh, the rod that's inside inside the brake booster that's not pressing hard enough or pushing pressing far enough. Um, I, what I'd like to do first is, is just bleed the brake system and see if I can, uh, by bleeding it, you know, if I can uh, get it to... Uh, you know, grab the brakes better. So that's the first thing. Um, not sure exactly how to jack this car up. I'm not sure if it has a perimeter frame or a uh, um, a frame like a pickup truck. So gonna have to go underneath it and see see if I can uh, you know jack the car. What I'd really like to do is you know, finish up my silver shadow, which you know I made the bre the brake lines for, but they're still leaking. I can get this one off the lift and then I can move the 6.3 off the lift I can put put it on the four post and, and raise it up in the air and I'd much rather do that than uh, you know try to jack it up or do anything like that because you know I'm not sure exactly um, what kind of shape the frame is in or the body and how it's bolted onto the frame so um, but, you know, it runs. Battery looks like it's fairly new. Uh, November 2018. So that's a good thing. And uh, the soft top works. And it's actually a very presentable car. It's, you know, there is a little bit of rust here and there. You can see, you know, bottom of the door over here. Oh, can't see that well. But, you know, all in all, I'd say it's, you know, it's in probably nicer shape than my Corniche. Um, even though my Corniche actually mechanically is in very good shape. Um, but anyway, so next step, I'm going to bleed the brakes, and uh, uh, I'll let you know how that works out uh, once I get the car, um, uh, you know, roadworthy. Um, I'll do a video of it driving down the road. All right, guys.